And let's have a, a round of applause to these wonderful speakers. I, I mean, I, I can't believe it. I mean, yeah. I mean, we got a composer, an author, a neuroscientist, an educator, and me. <laughs> I barely finished Perrysburg High School. No, barely. <laughs> I streaked across the stage to get my diploma. <laughs> That's why they barely gave it to me. <laughs> my name's Ken Leslie, and I'm an alcoholic. Oh, sorry, my bad, wrong meeting. <laughs> so I'm a professional comedian traveling around the country, making people laugh in the late 80s, and I started seeing more and more people becoming homeless on the streets of America. We were doing a comedy album here in Toledo, and uh, during one of the breaks, I read a United Way study, More Than a Place to Sleep, that 60% of the homeless in Toledo were families with children. Having been homeless myself, I thought it was unconscionable that kids would be on the streets. So I said to my friends, let's do something about it. And they said, what? And we said, I don't know. We ended up starting that tent city in 1990, and it still goes on today. In 2007, a guy named John Mellencamp came to our little tent city on his way to a show that night. And he was so moved by the people that he met that he invited all of them to a show that night. Sixty went. One of them came back after the show and said, John, or Ken, said Ken, John talked to us from the stage. I guess I really do matter. And that's how One Matters was born. So tonight we're going to talk about your power of one, how powerful you are. We're going to talk about your mind over matter. We're going to talk about the fact of the matter. And we're going to talk about a matter of life and death. First fact. It's a fact that you, right now, you sitting there are the most powerful person in this room tonight. You, 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 you are. You have amazing powers. It's a matter of fact that you've got the power, extraordinary power, to change lives and to save lives. And it's a matter of fact that you have the power of one to give. And it's that amazing power that we're going to talk about tonight and that we're going to unleash. If you think about it, everybody has to matter to somebody, to something. Harry Harlow did an experiment with rhesus monkeys where he'd take them away from his, their parents, right, right away when they're born, and they went bat crazy. And scientists say it was because of uh, attachment disorders, but I believe it was simply because they didn't matter to anyone. Can you imagine that? Imagine tonight you came in here and you were shunned by all of us. We ignored you. We got to the other side of the room because we didn't want to be near you. Would you feel you could accomplish anything? Would you feel that you mattered? But what about on the other hand, we said, hey, how you doing, man? What's up? How you doing? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming out. You're just so cool. I know you're going to do well. Are you going to feel you can do miracles then? And that's the power that you have, ladies and gentlemen, to matter, the power of one. Amazing things happen. Lives change when you give your power to one to people. For me, I uh, began a pharmaceutical career in Perrysburg High School, consuming them. <laughs> <laughs> and after I graduated, I turned pro. <laughs> I became a professional alcoholic and an addict. Did it really, really well. Now, the delusion is when you're an alcoholic and an addict, despite even a bout of homelessness, I still viewed myself as a party animal. Simple, party animal. But everybody else saw me as an alcoholic and an addict. Now, one of the things is that sometimes the delusion of being a party animal wavers a little bit. And when it happened to me one time, I realized how empty I was, how low I was. And I felt there was no hope for redemption. So I decided that I was going to do the only thing one could do, is that's kill myself. And I spent the day trying to figure out the best way to do it. But for some reason, I don't know why, I ended up going to an old age home that night and talking to old people. No idea why. Didn't know. But when I came out, I no longer wanted to kill myself. And now I realize I discovered one of those secrets of life. When you feel that you matter to no one, Go and care and matter to someone. That was a powerful lesson. It was life-changing for me. Let me tell you about my friend Jimmy, Jimmy Darnell Graham. 
We have the Saturday morning thing every Saturday downtown, Saturday morning picnic. We go down there and I'm hanging out and I see a guy standing over there. He's your, he's your stereotypical chronically homeless guy. You know how they look at burrs in his hair, wild eyes, teeth missing. And I went up and started talking and say, hey, how you doing, Jimmy? I'm Ken. Why are you talking to me, Jimmy says. Well, because I think you're cool. Nice to meet you. How you doing? He says, why are you talking to me? Nobody's talked to me for a week. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being so shunned that nobody's talked to you for a week? He kept trying to find my motive. You know, are you the police trying to get something? What's up? Are you, are you one of those? <laughs> no, Jimmy, but if I was, you wouldn't be my type. Sorry. <laughs> And so I went on and I started asking him, so why, 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 what's your story, man? He said, well, well, you know, I'm, I'm living in the river. I said, well, why are you living in the river? He goes, because I'm an alcoholic and schizophrenic. I said, that's bull. Why are you living in the river? He goes, because I'm an alcoholic and schizophrenic. I said, that's bull. Why are you living in the river? He said, I'm an alcoholic and schizophrenic. That's bull. Why are you living in the river? Because I don't have an ID. Would you help me get an ID, Mr. Man? And I'm thinking, well, what would Jesus do? Jesus wouldn't give me any money. He didn't have pockets. <laughs> And having been there myself, I said, wait, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy, you, you know, you seem like the smartest guy down here. Why don't you just ball it up and be a man for once in your life? He said, ball it up. Ball it up. And I went on to tell him the story about the secret of life that when you feel you don't matter to anyone, all you need to go out and do is go out and matter for someone. And we talked and talked. And he, uh, he was so motivated he was going to go get his ID that week because I have a policy. I'm not going to just give something to people. They have to take a first step. I've learned that. So Jimmy was going to get the idea we were going to help him get a, a place. And I had some of the volunteers go get him clothes because he smelled like the river. And this is where I fell madly in love with Jimmy Darnell Graham. We gave him the clothes. And he goes to turn to go to the library to change his clothes. And he stops. He turns around and says, I'm going to go pass this on. Here's a man not with nothing, with negative nothing. And given just a little bit of something. What he wants to do is go pass it on. Jimmy wanted to matter to others. But the matter of fact is, ladies and gentlemen, you really are the most powerful person in this room tonight. You have the power of one. Let's talk about mind over matter. You like my algebra? <laughs> Perrysburg High School. <laughs> Doesn't get any better, man. 120 hours, hell no. <laughs> I did like eight. The rest of the time I was like, come on, what do you think? <laughs> it's a good thing the statute of limitations is up. <laughs> no, seriously, algebra. I mean, you know, algebra, they have the test, you know, they say give your answer and then show your math, right? So I like gave the answer 27 and wrote, copied off of Bob. I thought he was right. <laughs> she gave me an A anyway for the creativity. It was a blast. <laughs> Have I told you guys that as a matter of fact, you are the most powerful person in this room tonight? Yes, you. You have this amazing power. And it's what your mind and what you can do with your mind to matter to people. I believe in humankind. I do. I believe in mankind. I believe in human nature. I believe it is the human nature of man and woman to be kind. I think that's how we were born. It's inside of us. I think you have to learn how to hate. I have to, you have to learn how to hate the poor or the disadvantaged or the different. You have to learn that. Because I believe by nature you were born with this gift inside you, the mind to matter. And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that you will find within yourselves, within this mind, this amazing power. Darwin. Darwin talks about the uh, survival of the fittest and the descent of man, mentions it twice. He mentions benevolence 99 times. It's about you having the mind to matter to one. And almost everyone can reach that place. I verified it over the last 25 years where countless times people given the opportunity to give, they did. I can count on one hand the number of times people said, screw the homeless, they can fend for themselves. 25 years. Because that nature is inside all of us. There's even a physical verification. 
You know, have you ever gone out and done something for somebody else expecting nothing in return? You know that powerful, wonderful warmth? That powerful feeling? It's real. It's real. Scientists, neuroscientists, and back me up on this, Tim. They say it, uh, you release the endorphins and dopamine into your compassion axis. I say it's just because you went out and you mattered to someone. There's a uh, professor of uh, bioscience named uh, Steve Post at Case Western Reserve at the uh, uh, University Medical School who has compiled 50 of the studies about this topic. And what he found out that one of the largest studies, 44, there was a 44% reduction in early deaths from people who went out to give. And one of my favorite statistics that he had, he said that the effect, I'm quoting now, the effect is greater than working out four times a week. I call this my compassion abs. <laughs> <laughs> He's going, see? <laughs> But we all have that power of one, that power of one to give. We do. Look at Scrooge. Scrooge is a great example. Look what happened to him. He was the meanest guy in the city. But as soon as he started to give, he was light as a feather. He's throwing money at the kid. Go get me a big turkey dude and get it to the people. Now, I say it was because he wanted to matter to people, and he did, and he felt good about it. Uh, Mr. Post says that he. Uh, uh, released his uh, uh, neurological, endocrinological, and uh, immune, you know what I'm saying, Imm immune, uh, sorry, rented lips. Tim, what is it? Immune, immune, immune a lot? Yes, thank you very much. Give him a, give him a round of applause. Thank you. Immune, <laughs> do you ever have one of those words where you just, is that she in immunology? But I think that's the power. And the power to give changes lives, too. Uh, Jimmy, remember Jimmy? I was really cool because I really was excited that he'd come back and, 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 and bring, his, bring his ID so we can get him a place. And he never came back. I mean, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, he never came back. And it made me sad. I gave up. I said, oh, well. And one day, I was down there on a Saturday, and two hands came towards my face. And normally, if you're from the streets, when two hands are coming towards your face, mayhem's about to ensue on your face. So I stepped back to look, see who's going to hit me, and it was Jimmy. In one hand was his ID, the other, the key to apartment 317. Jimmy, what the hell? And he said, balled it up. Balled it up. But, but what took so long? Six weeks. He goes, you're not going to believe this. But the other day, I saw an old guy. He had a car. And I went and helped him push. Normally, I'm going to ask for a little something, something. But I didn't. And then I'm walking down the street and the car pulls up. I thought it was somebody that's going to kick my ass. But it was the old guy. He got out and he gave me 20 bucks. Jimmy had discovered the power of one to give, the power of one to matter. And it is all a matter of life and death. Let's recap. You have the amazing power. Two, it's already inside you. And three, what are you going to do with this now? What are you going to do with this amazing power that you have? It's a matter of fact that you are the most powerful person in the room. It's a matter of fact that you have influenced people and you don't even know how much you've influenced them. Think right now, if you never had existed, how would your friend or spouse or family be had you never existed? And to feel it, turn it around. What if your best friend, your spouse, your family, your parents had never existed, where would you be right now? You are the most powerful thing in this planet. You are the one. There has never been another you, and there never will be another you, ever. So what are you going to do with it? What do you want to do with it? We have amazing power. Let me show you how simple it is. What's your name, sir? Ken. 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 Nice guy. Ken. <laughs> Ken. Nice. Yeah. Um, do you have a good smile? Let's see it. Oh, you, so you know that smile just go, you know, like you can say, hey, yeah, stand up. Here, help me out here. Stand up. What I want you to do is look over here and smile and nod, right, right? And then just, I want you to turn this way, just slowly, slowly. No, just check them all out and smile. 
<laughs> Keep going, just all the way around, pivot all the way around. Oh, you could see it, it's like the wave at a, at a baseball game. Thank you very much, that was very good. Yeah, and that was just your smile. Imagine if we put effort into whatever we do. How many leaders do we have here tonight? Leaders? One, two, three, four, five. That's pull. Every single one of you are leaders. You did not raise your hand. Why not? I did. Oh, no, 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 it didn't count. Come on, stand up. I'm going to prove to you. What's your name? Terry. Terry's a leader. Watch this. Start walking. Yes. Walk down, touch that table, come back. Wait, wait, slow. Follow her. Follow her. Just follow her. Come on, come on, come on. So what is Terry right now? And what made her a leader? She stood up. She stood up. And that's all you have to do. You have this amazing power. You are the most important thing on this planet right now. And what are you going to do with it? You have the power. Your smile alone affected the entire room. Your leadership had people following you and all you did was stand up. That is the amazing power of one. We're all called to something. We are. For some, it's helping the people on the streets or in the shelters. To others, it's different causes, cancer, diabetes, the block watch. For some, it's taking care of the widow next door, making sure her lawn's mowed or she has food. And yet, even others are called to take care of their parents. But we're all called to something. And when we're called, do we go? And I think that is the difference in life. If they're going to build you a monument, what are you going to do? What is it going to be of? What's it going to be about? How will you use your power of one to give? How will you be the you that you can be? Because I can tell you what, you guys will have the time of your lives. And that's all you have is the time of your lives. Your time is limited by the implacable wall of death. The end. Ta-da, finished goodbye. And when you die, will you matter? Will people come to your funeral and say, wow, they did such good? Or are they going to come just to verify that you are indeed actually <laughs> dead? <laughs> you can laugh. But that's going to depend on all of you. Each one of you. You are the most powerful person. There is only one of you. And there always will only be one of you. When your time comes, will you matter? I'm going to finish with a little recap so you hear about Jimmy. About eight months ago, Jimmy came up to me. It was so cool. He said, Ken, 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 it was urgent, urgent. And I said, what's up, Jimmy? He said, can you do me a favor? Can you be the best man at my wedding? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's a smile. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will, Jimmy. Here's the powerful thing, ladies and gentlemen. That day when I met Jimmy Darnell Graham, I really messed up his day. See, he's schizophrenic. Normally, he gets his medication and a shot, but that day, he got in a pocket of pills for a month. He told them because he wanted to balance it himself, but the fact is, the day I met Jimmy Darnell Graham, he was on his way back to the river where he was going to take all of those pills at once and as he says, quietly slip away in the water. Everyone matters. Thank you very much.